without having listened to his thoughts. But we just played the Yazidi leader who has much bigger problems than I do. Comes to, to America and tells us about girls and women being raped until they bleed to death. And mothers who go, go to plead for their daughters' lives in front of these monsters called the Islamic State. And they give them a meal. And then they tell them with a laugh that you had just been fed the flesh of your own children. We murdered your daughter or your son and we fed them to you in that power, that food that you just ate. Stories that you can't even imagine are true. Can you believe this? Would you like to hear a little more? Because I'm going to play one more piece. This is real, real radio now. In the midst of all this love, peace, and humility. Listen to clip five. ISIS militia have burned many Yazidis alive for refusing to convert and marry ISIS men. Young Yazidi boys are being trained to be jihadists and suicide bombers. All of our temples in the ISIS-controlled area are exploded and destroyed. The entire USD population was displaced in less than one day on August 3, 2014, in Sinjar. The USD and Kildo Syrian Christian face this genocide together. Why? Again, because we are non-Muslims. And because our path is the path of peace. For this, we are being burnt alive. For living as men and women of peace. Did you hear what he just said? Genocide against Assyrian Christians, against Yazidis. Genocide by Muslims, because our path is the path of peace and they won't convert to Islam. And we're told it has nothing to do with Islam. Obama keeps putting out the propaganda and the big lie that the Islamic State is not Islamic. And now the deceitful propagandists have the nerve to want us to not even use the word ISIL anymore the acronym ISIL, that's not good enough for those propagandists who are obviously, something's wrong here with this picture. They're now demanding that we use the word Daesh as the acronym for these murderous, genocidal maniacs in order to disassociate the word Islam from them entirely. And you think you're not living through propaganda? How can a liberal listening to me talk with you today? How could you still call yourself a supporter of Hillary Clinton? I don't understand it. How could you support a woman who will not step up for girls who are being raped until they bleed to death? How can you support a woman who puts out propaganda on a daily basis, making Republicans worse than the Islamic State? How can you support these values of yours when they're not values? They're non-values. I don't understand it unless you yourself agree with them and you really have no values. So I, I can't change anybody's beliefs. And I'm not in the, the business of wanting to change your beliefs, truthfully. And you know, when you ask me what I really get up and do the show for, do you think I get up every day and say, oh, I'm going to change one liberal into a conservative? That's not what I'm doing. I have no way to know who's listening to the show when you have millions of a mass audience, millions of people. How do you know who's listening at any moment? I want you to think about what I do when I ask you what you would do if you had my microphone for one day, one hour, one minute. Think about what I'm about to say to you. I'm sitting in a room with a microphone with a dog sleeping on a, on a little pillow near me. And I know my audience by the ratings numbers. Any 15 minutes, it's called AQH. It's larger than any football field in the country by three or four. That's how many people are listening at any 15 minute interval. Answer the question in that context when I return right here on the Savage Nation. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. My Savage Nation is sponsored by SwissAmerica.com. It's the only company I trust to protect my wealth. Call 800-B-U-Y-C-O. Thanks for sitting at my table today and having dinner with me or lunch, whatever you may be doing, snacking. I mean, basically, that's what we're doing together. I mean, talk radio is a community at the end of the day. You don't see me sitting in the Oval Office. Or, I'm giving an example. Big, big insignias behind me with powerful microphone putting out lies. We wouldn't exist one day, one minute in talk radio. None of us would. Were we not providing a service for the American people? We're speaking with you because we're basically all one community. 
And as any community will be, we disagree with each other sometimes. We agree with each other most of the time. Or we wouldn't be sitting and talking together as we do with the back and forth. So there are several different governments, excuse me, several different communities going on in this country at any one time. Why is it that I had to be the one to play for you the soundbite of that poor man from the Middle East, the head of the Yazidi human... Warning, the Savage Nation contains adult language, adult content, psychological nudity. Listener discretion is advised. And now, America's most exciting radio talk show, The Savage Nation. Talk radio for the thinking person, home of borders, language, culture, and here he is. Michael Savage. Well, things are heating up uh, in this sick nation of ours. It's on life support as a result of uh, a deranged surgeon in the operating theater who never should have given a med been given a medical license to begin with, who conned his way into the surgery and has been botching surgeries for seven years right now, and they still won't fire him. That's it. Did you see the World Net Daily story? I mean, it's based on reality. Go look it up yourself. Which is, <clears throat> I hope it's up on my website, I can't find it, but I'll tell you about the story. You see a, a board member of the ACLU, you know what the ACLU is, don't you? It's another foreign government within our government that called for the killing of Trump supporters. And he's on the board of the ACLU in, in Colorado. I can't find the story right now, but I can't mention the man's name, but it's still up there somewhere. I think it's on my Facebook page right now. It's I don't see it on World Net Daily even. But Facebook didn't take down the posting. Kill Trump chorus takes sinister new twist. There it is, right there. And uh, <clears throat> Facebook didn't take it down. Cheryl Chumley wrote it. ACLU called him Goebbels, said it's the final solution. His name is Loring Warbell, co-chair of the ACLU's Colorado Springs chapter, First compared Trump to Joseph Goebbels. He then called for the killing or injuring by gunfire of Trump supporters. He wrote it on Facebook, as reported by the Daily Caller. And he says, this is the final solution. If you're voting for him, I will have to shoot you before election day. Werbel, ACLU, went on. They're not going to listen to reason, so when justice is gone, there's always force. This is on the Facebook page. When justice is gone, there's always force. Final solution. I will have to shoot you before Election Day if you're voting for Donald Trump. Loring Warbell, W-I-R-B-E-L, with a peace logo, of course, as you well know, the peace logos always stand for fascism. Chairman of the Colorado Springs, the ACLU, board member of the Colorado ACLU, announced a strategy to defeat Trump, which is to shoot any Trump voter. They didn't take it down from Facebook. They took down my posting of pictures of actual Muslims holding actual signs in front of the actual Danish embassy calling for the death of Europeans and of Europe. <clears throat> they took that down. So I rest my case. Now, talking again about uh, censorship, we had a Yazidi leader come before Congress saying that because we're not Muslims, we're being burned alive. Unspeakable horrors are being inflicted upon children who are not Muslims, that you you have to listen to it. I have to play it again, I guess, until you finally hear it. I know he doesn't speak as well as um, as uh, Barak does. Mirza Ishmael has a broken English. I, I realize it's not as slick as him, not as hateful as Al Sharpton, not as smooth as that of uh, Hillary Clinton. But his message is shocking. They say that mothers go and plead for their children who are torn away from them by ISIS. They're fed a meal by the Islamic State. They're given a meal. And then the men in ISIS, the humans, the subhumans, say to the mothers, Mother, you've just been fed the flesh of your own child. Children are being murdered and fed to their own mothers. And Obama says nothing about this. The ABC, CBS, NBCers say nothing. The Jake Tapwaters, those men without a conscience, all of these slick men <clears throat> without a conscience say nothing about this? Why don't they say anything about this? 
because it would make Obama look like what he is. A disgraced surgeon in the surgical ward who's committing one botched operation after another. In other words, if you have a surgeon who's cutting people up on a surgical uh, cart, or excuse me, in a surgical uh, operating theater, and he's making killing one patient after another, and you don't fire him, how is that even possible? How? Because there's no medical board of oversight, no oversight board over the doctors called politicians, especially when it comes to the presidency. But I'm getting off track. I did that just to get you to understand how important the story really is. I started in another way today. And I started this way. I said, my voice and my ability to move crowds is my gift, but also my burden. This power that I have of this magical voice that God gave me, I first discovered in the first grade in a slum school in the Bronx. And I found out that I can change people's fates with my voice later on in life. As a kid, I found that I could move audiences. I didn't know what that meant. Later on in life, I found out that I can change people's fates with the power that, that God gave me. And I said, it's a great gift and a great burden. And then I asked you, how would you use this power if you were me as a broadcaster and best-selling author from this day forward? How would you use the power that I have to inspire people? And then I added this. I said, you can inspire through hate, as ISIS does or Al-Qaeda does. Or you can uh, use hatred, as the ACLU does. Or as Obama does in a kind of moderate way. Or you can inspire people through anger, through rage, through false righteous indignation, as many do on a daily basis. Or you can inspire, I said, through love, hope, and humor, which are the positives. Now, I know that it's cynical to think that love can beat hatred, and yet Christianity is built upon that one premise, isn't it? Think about that. The entire religion is built upon teaching people to turn the other cheek and to love thy neighbor. Well, that's easy to do when you live in a loving community. But when now the community has been turned into a hateful community by this bot, this surgeon who uh, is in charge of the entire surgery, he has taught neighbor to hate neighbor, race to hate race, gender to hate gender, nation to hate nation. Think about the damage this one man has done. He's almost brought us to the brink of World War III. He's taught us to hate our allies, Russia. I want you to think about this. It took 50 years of a Cold War where we lived on the brink of a nuclear holocaust to bring Russia and America together again, and things were going smoothly until this monster, this monster got into the uh, political world, and now he's turned the American people and a good portion of the Western world against Russia. Think about this. Think about how insane this is. And think about what this means with regard to world peace. We're on the brink, possibly, of World War Three. Now, I saved this story for the third hour. <clears throat> I pulled it off last night from uh, uh, an obscure website. 100,000 foreign troops, including Americans, are going to be deployed in Iraq, according to a leading Iraqi opposition MP. The U.S. has to send some 10,000 troops to Iraq to provide support for a 90,000-strong force from the Gulf states. The politician said the plan was announced to the Iraqi government during a visit by U.S. Senator John McCain. <laughs> During a meeting in Baghdad on November 27th, McCain told Prime Minister Hader Abadi and a number of senior Iraqi cabinet and military officials that the decision to send 100,000 troops was non-negotiable, claimed Hanan Fatulwai, the head of the opposition Irata movement. 100,000 foreign troops, including 90,000 from Saudi Arabia, the UAE gutter, and Jordan and 10,000 troops from America will be deployed in western regions of Iraq, she wrote on her Facebook page. She added that the Iraqi prime minister protested the plan, but was told that, quote, the decision has already been taken. The Americans would prop up a 90,000-strong international ground force provided by Sunni Arab countries like Egypt, Turkey, and Saudi Arabia. Did you hear this? The region is ready to explode, and that's because the region hates ISIL because ISIL is coming for Sunni Arab nations. Turkey hates ISIL. The entire region wants Assad gone. So there is an opportunity here with some American leadership to do two things according to the, may the crazy warmonger, Lindsey Graham. The crazy warmonger, the madman, Lindsey Graham, said there's an opportunity to do two things with American leadership, to knock out ISIL and to push Assad out at the same time. Sounds good, doesn't it? Well, think about it very carefully. <clears throat> Who is supporting Assad? 
Russia. So what does this mean? These two lunatics, McCain.